Resume recording. And that all. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome. Great to have you here. Very, very excited for you to join us today for our coaching through the coronavirus. I've realized today that we've been together now for three months. So grateful for all of you taking time out of your day to invest with us and show your shining faces and help us help business owners around the globe. So really grateful for, to have you here today. Can everyone hear me okay? Thumbs up. Awesome. All right. Well, I'm Chris Duzik. And again, welcome to Coaching Through Corona, how the world's top business coaches are helping their clients survive and scale through this crisis. Why are we doing this webinar? Because we want to help business coaches and accountants and, and business brokers during this global crisis. We believe business owners need coaching more now than ever. Our coaches are experiencing that around the globe. Business owners are really starting to rethink and have to think more about Golly, business is actually pretty dang hard. And I, as a son of an entrepreneur, really believe that small and mid-sized businesses are the backbone of our global economy. And so we want to have this webinar to help you business coaches leverage your skill set to help businesses around the globe and continue to support our strong economy. If it's your first time here, we strongly encourage you to post a comment or questions in the chat. We will try and answer them throughout the course of our discussion today. And just post when you have the question and we'll come around to it, I assure you. I really do look forward to sharing a special guest with you today. But first, in case any of you have forgotten, I'm Chris Duzik and I'm the CEO of Coaches Coach. I started my education with a master's degree in finance as a, sub, as a CPA with PricewaterhouseCoopers. Quickly was able to build a business in real estate where as a certified commercial investment member, I was able to secure hundreds of millions of dollars in real estate investment capital. When the real estate market got a little softer than I'd liked, I moved into the software as a service business where I started a company and grew it to 3 million global users. My last official job, I ran a $2 billion p and for a publicly traded company where I was able to grow the revenue by over $200 million. And honestly, I love my team there. I love my role, but I really miss small businesses. And so when I came to Coach as Coach, I really wanted to find a way to use my skills to be helpful to small businesses. And using our systems exclusively, I was able to build my coaching practice up to $13,000 in my second month, $25,000 in my third month, and $40,000 in my fourth month. And today I maintain that book of clients. But I also have the privilege of coaching other business coaches as I am a certified coach at Coach as Coach. That's me, many of you have heard my story before, so thanks for letting me share it again. Um, I do want to just let you know this is our last Coaching Through Corona session, so we do have a very special guest for you. As many of you know, we have designed at Coaches Coach what we call the Rockstar Coaching Program, and this is really designed to take a new coach to that ten dollars to $30,000 a month level using our proven processes. And the way that we've been able to build Coach as Coach is our founder, Eric, in the last two decades, kind of perfecting his approach to business coaching and has built some very valuable resources. In fact, we're so confident in the Rockstar Coaching Program, we believe we're the only coaching program out there that actually has a guarantee that if you work our program and you put the effort in, you will be able to get to that $10,000 a month run rate within the first 12 months. And we're able to do this because we've really cracked the code on the three things that every business coach needs. And that is a predictable proven process, a supportive peer community, and a certified coaches coach like myself, who's actually out there coaching and generating income. Speaking of coaches getting to $10,000 a month within their first year, I'm really honored to kind of feature one of our new coaches, Sabrina Renee Kinkle. And she joined the program. I'll let her tell you her story, but she joined the program less than two months ago. Before she was in the coaching program, she actually had used sales strategies for a large multinational SaaS and generated sales revenue growth of 100,000% uptick to achieve $25 million annually. Since 2000, Sabrina has actually developed and executed successful sales strategies 
that resulted in sales revenue of over $150 million, increasing sales revenue by at least 45%. Yeah, at least 45%. I had to read that twice when I saw it myself. Sabrina has also built revenue generating teams, divisions, and departments from the ground up. She advises startups and small to mid-sized companies on P&L operations. She's executed marketing programs that consistently generate an average of $200,000 additional revenue per $12,000 ad spent. Oh, that was me. That's not Sabrina. I'm sorry, Sabrina. It's my bad. Error. Um, Sabrina is also a voracious reader, a recreational video game player, and an avid traveler. She's been happily married to Kelly for almost 20 years. I can tell you, for me, when I first met Sabrina in the Rockstar Coaching Group, like I immediately just heard something in her voice that made me believe she had the mindset to be successful. And so what I'd like her to do is tell us a little bit about herself, and I've got some questions for her, and I want to invite you to ask questions along the way as well. Sabrina, are you there? Can you hear me? I am, yes. Hi. How are you? Awesome. Wonderful. Would you share, Good. tell us a little about yourself and um, then I'll ask you some questions. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, so I've been developing sales methodologies and strategies for a long time, uh, a little over 20 years. And I've uh, been a small business owner um, for quite a few years and I co-own it and really was nervous about taking that leap from working the business part-time to full-time. Uh, and COVID hit, um, and at the time I was working in an executive leadership position for a small company that was crippled by COVID, uh, quite honestly. And so it forced me to make some decisions, and rather than going after another full-time position, I thought, you know, this would be a really wonderful opportunity for me to focus on the consultancy full time. And while we did a combination of consulting and coaching, I hadn't really sought out um, an extremely structured framework to do that. And so I was investigating different opportunities and certainly different um, organizations. And the name that kept popping up over and over again was the Coach's Coach and the Rockstar Coaching Program. And um, after speaking with Eric, I was completely won over by the program and hoped to be accepted into it. And um, I've been floored by the results that I've gotten. Um, Chris, as you mentioned, I, it hasn't even been two months since I started. Um, I officially started May 11th. And prior to joining the Coaches Coach, I would say in terms of new coaching clients, I was averaging somewhere between uh, one every 30 and, and between 45 days, a new client. Um, and in less than 30 days, I actually brought on six new clients using the Coaches Coach program. So um, really excited. Can't even <laughs> say that enough. Um, completely surpassed my expectations. I would have been happy with, you know, getting maybe two <laughs> in a month period um, that would have doubled what I was already doing on my own. And to, to actually hit those numbers so quickly, um, I'm excited, really excited. That's awesome. That's awesome. We're really excited for you and honored to have you in the Rockstar Coaching family. I mean, so I know now 40 days later, 42 days later, whatever it is, it's exciting to talk about the results, but just for people who on this call aren't familiar with or are trying to make decisions about where to invest their time and their energy, you know, what were, what were some of your reservations or fears, honestly, when you learned about Coach's Coach and the program that kind of Eric has built? The biggest one I had was in making the investment and not getting a good return on it, very honestly. Um, my thought was, um, you know, I, I had some uh, rainy day funds that I'd put together for trying to find a good program. And, but it's challenging to know um, off the cuff what a good one is to go after. And um, a lot of companies have the same rhetoric. You know, we're thinking of you. We're thinking of your business. Um, but then you talk to people who have gone through the programs and find out that they haven't had nearly the success that they were looking for. Um, so I had a lot of reservations where that was concerned. And then the other was in putting all of my time and energy in one organization. Um, that was a reservation of mine. And, and I thought, 
it's it's challenging from a mind shift to do that, especially because I had come from a world where I was working full time and then working my business part time. But I thought if I don't jump in and do this now, I'm never going to do it. So, so I jumped in. Wow. Well, that's, that's awesome for you. It's really awesome. I mean, you know, you, I, you're clearly an experienced sales leader. You've led sales teams. You've been successful. Yet your own coaching practice, as you said, it was taking you 30 or 45 days to get a new client. Obviously, giving it your full-time effort was a huge piece of it. But what are some of the other things that you got from the program that allowed you to go from, you know, one or, one or three quarters of a customer every month to five or six in a month? Like what, what was different for you as a sales leader when you picked up our system? So one of the things I would say right off the cuff um, was a, a very, very clear framework and one that you could customize. Um, the framework that the Coach's Coach has from the five steps to freedom to going through the 21 bullets, um, amazing, just in terms of being able to customize those uh, tools and apply them to whatever your personal consulting or coaching business is. And for me, that part was huge. Um, another piece of it was giving myself uh, the same level of accountability that I would um, heading departments and teams. Sometimes we just don't do that, you know, and I've been in the executive space for a long time. And um, I just, it's, it was nice. It was wonderful to get that level of accountability. So between having a one-on-one -on -one coach of my own, um, which is fantastic. I had never done that. Um, and then also having this weekly accountability call where we're all not only going through coaching together, but we're hearing things and we're learning things. And there's some best practices that are being shared and common questions that are coming up. Um, and, and how do you overcome some of the things that are happening, especially now uh, with this economic shift that we're experiencing? Those were things that I was really missing. Um, and then last but not least, I would say really having a, an extremely solid and applicable tactical marketing plan. Um, I'm very nerdy about going through my coach control system every day and taking a look at, okay, how many leads have I gotten this week? You know, where does that take me in terms of um, my conversion rates and trying to increase those as much as I possibly can. Um, so just, that forced accountability um, alongside the investment. I mean, I think if you're willing to put that investment in yourself and or your company, you're gonna be that much more motivated to stick to the systems that are in place. Um, and with, and the systems in place, uh, wow. I mean, I, I don't even have the number for how many videos and templates and uh, just, spreadsheets and tools and everything else that's already a part of the system, let alone all of the, the coaching and support and a, a real focus on our individual businesses exists. So it's, it's just been pretty amazing. Awesome. That's awesome. Well, I actually want to dig in a little bit more to your tactical marketing plan and your approach there just for the people on the call to learn. However, first, I want you to tell me a little bit about the last six weeks in your life outside of business coaching, how has it been impacted by the success that you've had in the middle of, you know, coronavirus and the atmosphere that we're in? What, how's your life been different in the last six weeks with this level of success? And ah, Oh, that's a great question. Um, I'd say part of it is um, there really is a, a positive domino effect to bringing in that many clients. Um, because one of the, and I know we'll dip in a little later, but one of the areas that I'm really focusing on is referrals. Um, that's starting to take on a life of its own. So whereas initially, you know, I really was trying to figure out, okay, what are some good contacts to go after? Now I'm having instances where people are just sending me contacts or people are just reaching out saying, hey, you know, so-and-so told me that I should have a conversation with you um, as recently as over the weekend. So, um, so that's been a really big deal. Um, secondly, you know, feeling a, a really good level of um, confidence and credibility in terms of using a system that's been tried and tested uh, and being able to talk more 
articulately about my own framework based on what I've been able to customize using the coaches coach system. So, so that's been huge. It's been really big. That's awesome. That's awesome. I really appreciate you sharing it. I know that um, lots of business coaches out there, you know, are able to, when they have success in that, in their business coaching career, it creates a lot of freedom and a lot of different feeling in other parts of their lives. Um, we did get a couple of questions. So I'm going to try to use some visual aids here the best I can. So, you know, one question we got was about, you know, what kind of process you use to create warm leads and then your strategy to kind of convert those leads. So I, I personally know your strategies, but would you mind just kind of talking us through your two or three lead generation strategies and how you use them? Yeah, definitely. So, um, so I have to, I can't state enough the fact that I really am using the system like a textbook. Um, the, Areas that I've used, um, I'm very much doing the, uh, I hired a telemarketing company, so I am using one of those uh, as a source. I am also doing a lot with social media, particularly with LinkedIn. Um, referrals I mentioned, and then my fourth one that I'm focusing on is networking. I would say I'm, in, I'm focusing on the first three uh, primarily, and then uh, networking when I can. Um, with, you know, this BNI, for instance, uh, and just doing some networking there. With the LinkedIn, um, that has been getting me some really interesting leads. I've been using a lead generation or automation program. It's called Lead Connect, um, and there are several out there. We Connect is also another one that's really good. Uh, Zopto, I, I know is, I've heard some good things about that one as well, but I happen to be using Lead Connect. And it's uh, basically an, off, an automated tool where you set up sequencing email um, and you can decide whether or not you're reaching out to uh, second level connections through LinkedIn or third level connections or both. Um, I started using it to reach out to my second level connections and that's proven to be a really, really good process. At first, I was mixing the third and the second. You get many more people who will uh, connect with you where there's that second level where they look and say, oh, you're connected to 10 people I know, why not? Um, and I've used uh, three or four different sequence emailing templates where each of these contacts, they receive on average a chain of three to four emails um, through my LinkedIn system, basically warming them up and asking them to, to hop on a call. Um, and I've gotten a, a really, really nice number of leads from there. I'm averaging probably somewhere between, depending on the week, uh, maybe 10 and 15 leads from that system by itself per week. Uh, then for the telemarketing, I'm using a high volume telemarketing company uh, that's, that's low cost. So if anyone wants information on it, we can talk afterwards. But at any rate, um, they are overseas, and I did have some reservations, um, but I've been working with them now for a few weeks, and I am getting um, some good silver bullet calls. Um, I was, in terms of setting appointments for those calls, um, initially, there was a bit of a ramp up there. So, you know, the good thing about the company is I was able to work back and forth with them in terms of fine-tuning uh, objections and that sort of thing, and now they're they're turning out um, at least one to two leads for me every day, which is fantastic. Um, then through my referrals, there's a, a very structured system that the coach's coach has, and I've been using that very much to my advantage. I would, that's probably the area where I was the most nervous, to be honest. Um, I have a ton of connections, but there, there is a vulnerability to communicating with people who are close to you and saying, hey, I need help. And um, I've, I've always felt a lot more comfortable going after people I don't know. You know, oh, that C-sweet person over there, let me connect with them. It's a little bit more challenging for me to, to have that vulnerability and say, hey, you know, I, I'm doing this thing, I'm starting this thing, I'm growing, can, uh, can you help me out? And um, that is the, the process. And so I took advantage of it and I have been floored by how many referrals I'm getting as a result. Um, so those are the 
three main ones of the three strategies, those lead generation strategies that I'm focusing on. And then last but not least, networking opportunities. Um, I speak on a lot of virtual events. Prior to COVID, I would go to a lot of seminars and trade shows and that sort of thing. So now I'm trying to do as much of that as I can uh, in a virtual format. And, and I've been getting some leads. I would say that's probably the least amount of leads that I've been getting. Uh, I think the pre-COVID world and meeting people face-to-face uh, was a lot more um, lucrative for me from a networking perspective, but I am still developing some leads from that as well. That's awesome. That's awesome. So outsource telemarketing, LinkedIn, social, and then, and referral. And I, and I want to talk a little bit about the conversion process, but we did, we did get a question from Linda, which is really a fair question. You know, did, did some of the lead generation strategies get you quicker results than others? If so, which ones? That's our specific question. Ah, that's a great question. So, hmm. So on the LinkedIn has been interesting for me. Um, I would say it's a mix. And just like selling anything else, most of the people say no, right? But then you do get those leads who say, yeah, uh, let's, Let's go ahead and talk. Um, and I would say I've gotten some really, really good results from that, where the conversation went in a direction that the contact didn't expect and where we were really able to uncover an opportunity. Um, and uh, so I, I've brought on six between May 11th and um, actually between May 11th and before June 11th, I brought on six. I'm hoping to bring on a seventh one this week. Um, and of those six, uh, two of them came from LinkedIn. Um, wow. Two of them came from referrals out of those six. And then the other two are actually from the telemarketing. So in terms of actual results, I would say it's an even split. In terms of the number of leads that I'm getting, I would say I'm getting more from LinkedIn, but the conversion rate is higher on uh, the referral. I'm so, I mean, I'm so glad that you made that point because I think – a lot of people just feel like they need to have more leads and don't realize that even though you got more leads from LinkedIn, the conversion, you still get, you still got two new customers and kind of understanding the work that you have to do. So talking a little bit more about the work that you have to do, help me understand how you've used kind of the silver bullet script and the webinar seminar to help with that conversion process. Cause I know you were selling consulting and coaching services before, so tell me how that's kind of changed your approach to that process. So I think going from a, a silver bullet call to a complimentary coaching session has been really beneficial for me. Um, as a matter of fact, the process, uh, so I've used the telemarketing services in two different ways. One of them is the one that I mentioned where I'm really just having these telemarketers book silver bullet calls. And then from there, you know, we move forward and, and if the silver bullet call went well, we do a complimentary coaching session and we continue from there. The other way that I'm using telemarketing services is by having them register people for a group uh, webinar. And that webinar is actually a group version of the complimentary coaching session. So then what happens is the telemarketer will register them for the event and set the expectation that, hey, before you attend this event, Sabrina Kinkle, our managing partner at Calvary Consulting is actually gonna hop on a quick call with you just to understand more about your business and to make sure that the information that she shares during the webinar, that it's relevant for what you're going through. And then I use that opportunity to hop on a call with them prior to the webinar and actually go through a silver bullet call at that point. So then they've already had that um, interaction with me. We've done the silver bullet and now we can go to the complimentary coaching session and I've already gotten them really excited um, in a different way. So that has uh, done a really good job for me of getting some, some great traction. Many of my open opportunities right now are from that format. Um, the, client that I'm hoping to close this week um, is from that process as well. Um, and that's one that I would recommend. Awesome. 
Awesome. That's, that's, that's really helpful. Um, we did get a couple of questions. I'm going to just throw at you if you don't mind. One question was, you know, do you have a specific target market that your target industry or market that you're looking at from a customer standpoint? Yes, definitely. So um, my own experience has been very much um, on the SaaS side um, as well as market intelligence. So I try to work with companies that are related to one of those two areas. Um, because right now I'm, you know, I'm just starting out really from doing the, the full coaching, right? So I'm, I'm not as selective or niche oriented as I think I will be, um, you know, maybe a year from now. Right now I'm really focused on just trying to get the business. Um, however, when the companies that I am speaking to and when I do my targeting campaign, uh, when I target the companies, whether I'm using uh, LinkedIn or even when I'm doing the telemarketing, the list that they're pulling, they tend to be organizations that fall under those industries. So that's worked well for me. Um, but part of the reason why I think it does is because when I communicate with these companies, I'm able to speak uh, with a certain level of credibility to their industry. And so that's something that's been helpful. That's awesome. That's really great. That's really great. Um, one more question about kind of lead generation and conversion. I want to talk a little about coaching, and I really appreciate you being so generous with your time. Um, from a lead generation front, uh, we got a question from the group that kind of said, because you're a, a known commodity in terms of sales management and sales leadership, do you think that made it easier for you to get customers? You got 20 years of experience in that space. You know, said quite simply, are most of your customers asking for help with sales and lead generation, number one? And then number two, do you feel like the system would have worked for you if you didn't come to it with 20 years of sales leadership experience? Ooh, great question. Um, yeah, I do still think that it would have worked. I think, and, and I'll give an example. Um, one of the clients that I brought on, what we're helping with two things. Um, one is, the sales process management, which of course I have experience in, but the other is exit strategy coaching. And that's a piece that I have not done a lot with prior to working with the coach's coach. And I'm very much using the coach's coach's system in order to do that. Um, I think certainly, you know, the foot in the door was the experience that I had for sure. But I also think it's possible to expand beyond um, you know, those areas where maybe we've had years of experience using the framework and saying, hey, here are some ways that I can help outside of, you know, the, the CV or hot bio that I've already mentioned to you. Um, I think that when it comes to reaching out to companies cold, um, you know, with these lead generation strategies, with the exception of the, the referrals, certainly being able to provide some credibility, some foot in the door uh, information about what you've done is important. I would say that. Um, but I think that there's some creative ways that you can do that. Uh, I just from being part of the coaches coach for, you know, this, this brief period of time that I have, um, it looks like many of us are within the same 15 to maybe 17 years of age. And that being the case, I imagine that most of us had professions that we came from prior to going into this. And I would say that whatever those skills were, um, that, you know, it might be a good idea to talk about the successes that you've had with those particular skills. Awesome. That's, that's, that's I mean, it's a great answer. And I think um, I would just add to that answer. I think I got a similar question from two or three people. We talk a lot about head trash and sales achiever mindset. And so it's really about building your hot bio as we walk you through in the system and reminding yourself and your clients of your experiences and what you can do. Um, ultimately, people are gonna buy from you because you believe in you and you've got a system that you can believe in. So Sabrina, just talking about something fun, six clients in a month, like are these paying clients around what are they paying you? Like. Help us just help us envision what that's like. So um, those six clients, they equal 
Uh, hair under $10,000, um, they equal 9,900. So on average, a little over 1,600 um, a month per client. That's awesome. That's awesome. So in a month, you created additional income for your family of six, about over $9,000 in a month working our system. That's yep. awesome. That's great. That's awesome. Congratulations. Yeah. That's so wonderful. Now, as a business Thank coach you. of many, I have to ask two questions. What's it like to onboard six clients? And then how many hours do you envision spending each month per client to kind of understand what the return is on your time? Ah, oh, great question. So um, I'm not near capacity yet when it comes to coaching them, but I am already paying a lot of attention to uh, the information that's available on um, building a firm and all those good things. Um, looking out, not too far out, but probably, you know, another 12 months or so, I do want to start uh, building the firm. And I also want to focus on uh, group coaching and mastermind opportunities. I think that will um, help tremendously in terms of having that bandwidth while also continuing to bring on more clients. Okay. So kind of more specifically, when we talk about the coaches coach system, we talk about doing a weekly coaching call and we talk about different levels of price for different amounts of time. So how much time have you agreed to in your coaching agreements um, on average for your six clients? Um, on average, it's uh, four hours a month. Okay, for each so one. four hours a month. So, yep. so effective billable rate, you know, around four hundred dollars. And these are your first six, so you're just getting started now. Yep, that's great. That's mm -hmm. awesome. That's absolutely awesome. That's really great. What's it been like onboarding them? Um, have, we have a great system for acquiring clients, but have now you've kind of been through the onboarding as well. So, talk to me about onboarding six clients in one month and how that's been. So uh, I have tried to have a, a, basically a, a systematic process each time so that this way I'm not recreating the wheel every time I do that. Um, what's great is that there are, uh, there's a proposal template basically and, and actually part of what you're showing here on the screen is, is what I use um, and that's been really useful. Um, I've also basically reformatted this slightly and um, put it in a system called PandaDoc where I'm able to have those templates and the only thing that I'm doing is uh, changing the name, changing the pricing, and then boom, sending it out, which is fantastic. Um, and also, you know, collecting those payments through the same system. Um, so I've, I've found some ways to really automate bringing them on. And then of course, um, the coaching itself um, because of the tools that exist in the system, I'm applying that system to my own customized way of, of working with those clients. So there are some um, tools and offerings that we provided anyway. Um, and being able to use the coach's coach to, you know, really make that pop and customize it a bit has been really, really useful. Awesome. That's really great. That's really wonderful. Um, from a standpoint of that's kind of getting the agreement done and then getting them set up. Are you doing, it's one last question on coaching and then we're going to move to the next thing, but are you doing strategic planning days or are you planning to do one with your new clients as part of your coaching engagement? That is part of it. And the strategic planning day that came, we weren't doing that prior to the coach's coach. Um, so that is something that um, we started doing as a result. Um, and it's part of the expectation that's set with the client is that, you know, they are going to go through that, that setup. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, I find it to be a great way to build that long-term view of the engagement so they understand that you're going to walk them through multiple silver bullets. So I'm glad to hear that you're doing it as a normal and standard pro process as we would recommend that you do kind of shifting gears because you are a sales leader. Um, you know, we have our 17 P's process here at Coach's Coach. 
Eric is role modeling in the last couple of months for this group. Uh, it is available on our member only site, but we did get a question just kind of asking how this is different or how this compares to Sandler. And so I hate to put you on the spot, but just if you've got some thoughts about that, I'd love to hear them. Yeah, I would say, um, I would say the probably the biggest difference um, would be the how you're checking in in between each uh, of the the P's or the processes um, and going back to whatever it was that you had done previously. So I would say that's probably one of the biggest differences. Um, the other is, of course, um, you know, the problem and the pain point that's there for both systems, but then how you go about presenting and proposing really different um, between the two systems. And I would say that there is uh, definitely value in both, but I really, really think that the way uh, the coaches coaches system is set up, it's more um, applicable for business coaching. Um, so that's, that's probably what I would say in terms of the differences. That's awesome. That's awesome. I think, I think you probably um, answered the, the question that we got, which was a great question. Um, honestly, I think one of the strong things that we teach and we practice on the weekly coaching calls, which you know, is really practicing kind of those small yeses along the way and kind of getting the buy-in. And then as Eric role modeled so perfectly, getting two or three real problems and pains before you move forward to make sure that you've got plenty of value to demonstrate in that proposal. Um, and then I know the, the profit equation is something that our coaches brag about across the board. Um, I've got a couple more questions. Do you mind if I just kind of rapid fire them at you, Sabrina? Or you can say, you can throw in the towel anytime you want. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Well, you know, we kind of encourage in our system, we talk about zero dollar a month marketing budget starting out and a two thousand dollar a month marketing budget now we do have a way to kind of recoup that quickly in our system what kind of is your average either customer acquisition cost or kind of your budget for marketing that you've set aside each month for your for your coaching practice uh so right now i'm at roughly twenty two hundred dollars a month for marketing advertising and that includes um the tools that I'm using as well. So I'm using a, a number of tools that I mentioned, um, particularly, you know, for LinkedIn and so on. Um, and then straight advertising, I am doing a little bit of advertising on Google ads um, and on Facebook um, to attract uh, folks to webinars. And um, the whole amount that I'm spending a month is about 2200 that's awesome. That, that's extremely helpful. It's extremely helpful. Um, I know that we've talked a lot about the predictable proven process. How has it been for you to be plugged in with a group of business coaches at different, different parts of the world at different stages, kind of to help you as you're growing your business. Talk to me a little bit, how much has the supportive community really played a role in your business growth and success? Oh, huge. Very much so. Um, there are, People on this call that I actually connect with uh, fairly regularly. Um, what's nice about the accountability calls is it provides um, a very organic way to connect with people who are really going through the same challenges. And so I've been um, delighted by how open people have been um, to be helpful, to provide some tips. Um, provide tools that maybe they've been using and I've done the same um, that maybe they haven't had access to. Um, it's been, it's been tremendous. And as a result, I'm communicating with coaches that are not only all over the country, but literally all over the world. Um, and that's, that's been pretty cool. Um, we have some coaches that are uh, from down under and so playing with time zone to connect has been kind of fun. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's really a testament to how much we are learning from one another as well as utilizing this system. So it's, it's been a, a great experience in that way. Well, and I just want to, I want to admonish you because you and one of our other coaches have kind of taken the lead in doing, we have the weekly coaching call, which 
is great and it drives accountability, but you guys have gone above and beyond. I think you've got a couple calls scheduled every week where you're doing practice silver bullet calls with one another. And I haven't been on one yet, but I've heard from a couple of my coaches. They're not easy. They're no joke. So I wanted to <laughs> thank you for not only getting the help from your peer community, but also giving it back. And that's just, I really want to admonish you for doing that. I really do. Um, what's, you know, what is the, if someone could ask you directly, you know, what is the number one or two lessons that you've learned in this last six weeks? You've been an executive, you've been successful, you've had your own business. The last six, five or six weeks has really been astonishing. You know, what, what's your number one or two takeaways from that? And please don't give me some cookie cutter answer. I want to really know, like, if you were talking to your children and they were in your shoes, what would you say? Hey, this is the one or two things you need to know. So one is um, be willing to work really hard. Um, I've, I can say that um, I've, I've put in a lot of hours to get these results. Um, and I'm happy to do it because I want the results. Um, I see myself as working extremely hard now so that I can work a little less hard later. Um, so if, if you are in a building phase, and that's definitely the case for me, um, and you just don't have a lot of time, if you're thinking, okay, I'm just going to do this from nine to five with an hour lunch, Monday through Friday, and that's it, I'm done, then I think it would be a lot harder um, to get these results. Um, if you're willing to put the time in and make sure that time is structured, I, I think that's a really good thing. Uh, that would be one takeaway. Another is um, be open. Uh, there have been some really good opportunities that have come my way um, to partner with people, to connect, where um, the initial revenue probably wouldn't come until a little bit later, and I'm already seeing how that will um, set things up financially in the future. So I say, um, I think being open is a really important piece. Um, and stick to your numbers. I think that um, there is a, definitely a, a fear that if you say no to a client or a prospect, um, let's say they can't afford your services, um, to just kind of lowball yourself and say, okay, I'll offer this for a much cheaper number. Um, and I, I, especially now, I think many of us as coaches, we're feeling that pressure, right? Because it's a post COVID world and we want to get as many customers as we can, but I'm actually finding that, um, going after those who can afford my services, um, is yielding better fruit than just taking whatever comes, because then that means you're going to have to work that much harder. You're going to have to pay that much more money to get a return on investment. And, um, and it's not worth it. So those would be probably two really big takeaways that I'd mentioned. Wow. Well, no, that's, that's, that's great. That's a great. Well, um, I want to just affirm you for everything that you've done in the last five or six weeks and you've been inspiration the people on this call, as well as myself. Um, just, wow. Just so much fun to work with you. I don't think we have any more questions. Um, Eric, if I missed one, you want to throw one out, or did I get them all? I think we've covered them. I think we've, I think we've been covering them here. I'm just scanning through. So. Oh, hey, one other one. One question was asked by Aaron. He wanted to know if, at any point in the process, Sabrina, have you begun using Benchmark Boss, which is it is a, a, a recommended part of our process, uh, but just curious if you've uh, dug into that. I haven't dug in. I haven't dug into that yet. No, I have not. So, uh, not no yet. problem. No, <laughs> no problem. So, so for those of you who don't know what that means, uh, Benchmark Boss is a, a service that allows you to uh, do two things during the sales process. You can get what we call industry benchmarks based on NAISC or uh, SIC codes and look at all of the different um, financial ratios that are typical of the industry that you're thinking about as you're talking with a specific prospect. 
Um, so a standard part of our sales process is to just grab that industry benchmark report. So have some sense of what's happening in that industry, that vertical. Um, you know, obviously, Sabrina is doing great without uh, being armed with that intelligence that she goes in to talk to people, but she is talking with people in industries that she knows. So, so the benchmark, uh, benchmark boss process can be particularly helpful when you're talking to industries you don't really know much about. So that's the first thing. Second thing is once you land them as a client, the benchmark, pro benchmark boss process allows you to do a soup to nuts evaluation of their financial condition uh, by taking their actual financial information, loading it in, and then comparing it to an international database of SMBs, SMEs. All right, so that's the benchmark boss process, and that's a part of you know, our entire system. Okay, so that was a good question, Aaron. Thanks for asking that. Um, uh, one other question here I saw, uh, what investment per month in each of the external marketing resources? I think maybe Sabrina an answered that question, but maybe Sabrina, what are you spending per month on the telemarketing specifically? Maybe you already said that, but. Um, no, 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 I, I don't think I have. Um, uh, it comes to roughly 925, 930 a month. Um, I am using a company that is outsourced. Uh, it's called RBC Marketing. Their, uh, their parent company is in uh, Raleigh, North Carolina, um, but their telemarketers are in different countries. And uh, the telemarketers that I'm using are actually based out of Jordan. Um, there is another coach that I connect with very regularly, um, and he's also using that system. His uh, it's, we don't have the same telemarketers on our campaign. Um, so I do want to give a disclaimer and say that I'm getting some really good results with them. I've, I've worked with the telemarketers that are on my campaigns and have coached them and that sort of thing to get the results that I want. Um, I do know another coach who's using the same system. I actually introduced him to it and his results have been um, a little mixed. So if it is something that you want to go after, I do have some tips for how to try to maximize your results with it, but but that is the one that I'm using. That is a that is a very insightful comment, and no matter what telemarketing solution you use, you know we're always going to need to mentor and coach our people who are representing us, no matter who we use. And so, um, yeah, but I'm, I'm glad you shared that nuance. Uh, Chris, that's all I see here, man, in terms of uh, questions that haven't been answered otherwise. That's awesome. That's awesome. Well, again, Sabrina, thank you so much. What an amazing job. What a pleasure it is for me to be on a call with you every week and get to hear how your business is growing. It's inspirational uh, for me, I know, and for all the other coaches. So thank you so much. And you know, great work embracing the coaches coach system. I think people often ask me about my accelerated success, which it sounds like you're on track to, to beat me, which I'm happy to give you the uh, trophy. <laughs> Um, when you, when you, when you break that 40,000 mark in your fourth month, you can have it. I'll be happy to do it. <laughs> but I love what you said, which was, you know, working the system. I continually say to people, I'm a smart guy. I'm a seasoned executive. But when I came out, I said, I'm just going to work the system as it's defined. And honestly, it avoided, it avoided a lot of, um, helped me avoid a lot of distractions and made me kind of stick with the coaching control center every single day. And that's just, Golly, wow, what, what a great tool, what a great tool. Um, I wanna just take a quick minute just to kind of wrap up what we talked about over the last 90 days. Um, and I just wanna remind each of you that Coaches Coach does have an amazing system that provides you what every business coach needs. And it starts with our discipline and principles around mindset and you getting your mind where it needs to be to be a coach. And we do provide you with that accountability and all the tools to be successful as a coach. But we talked about last week kind of, you know, what's stopping you from living your best life. And so I thought I would just take a minute and ask you to throw in the chat box, what's stopping you from living your best life? And if there's anything that I can do or Eric can do, or I'll even enlist Sabrina to help you start to live that best life, I'd love to know what it is so we can offer to help. 
We are going to leave the Coaches Coach member only Facebook page open so we can continue to correspond there. But if anybody would have the courage to say what's stopping you from living your best life, um, I'd love to hear it. Um, and I can tell you that most people are aware of the best life they want. And for whatever reason, they don't have the practice in place to focus every day on achieving that. And so when we talk about the, the sales achiever mindset and the mindset exercises and the vision book every day, which you've heard me talk about now for months, those are the things that we encourage you to do to start living your best life ever. Um, I don't have anything else, Eric, since it has been your generosity for 90 plus days to lead this group and give back to business coaches and business brokers and accountants around the world. I thought I'd give you the last word, sir. Well, hey, thanks. Um, we started these uh, right as COVID was, you know, nailing uh, us all around the world. And, and the only reason we're going to uh, call this our last coaching through Corona is just because Chris and I are going into a, a uh, some, some time off. I'm going to be away for a couple of two, three weeks. Chris is going to take some time off in July. Uh, but if these have been helpful to you and you'd like us to, to come back and do something else that you'd be helpful, please just send us an email. Let us know what your thoughts are. Tell, you what, tell us what you liked over the last 90 days. Uh, tell us how you'd like us to serve you. Um, and we'll be happy to do so. If you are, again, if you're fairly new to these calls, go to Coaches Coach Group dot com coaches coach group dot com uh you can actually uh, get in for free uh right now and uh we, we really do want to support um uh coaches and and small businesses around the world uh i was uh, i learned just this morning in fact that in the united states um you know, small businesses are uh facing a difficult time you know like never before and we've got uh, business owners all around the United States, uh, especially baby boomers who are trying to retire. And there's something like uh, two thirds of all the businesses around the United States, two thirds are owned by uh, baby boomers wanting to retire. And the challenge for most baby boomers wanting to retire right now is there's no one to buy their businesses. And the reason for that is because their businesses have not been coached, unfortunately, most of them. And there have not been set up to, uh, to, to allow for any kind of a reasonable succession plan. So we're actually facing a systemic, uh, kind of almost catastrophic economic wave over the next, it's going to be another 10 to 15 years um, until the wave of retiring baby boomers are able to uh, basically divest themselves. So, um, you know, your, your role as a business coach uh, in terms of um, helping and undergirding the uh, economic fabric of the United States and other uh, countries around the world, your role has never been more important. We need to get into businesses. We've got to coach them. We've got to help them become self-sustaining. We've got to help businesses create enterprise value so that buyers will be willing to buy those businesses. And uh, again, I particularly want to thank all of you who are involved in this industry, uh, those who are, who are not white guys, <laughs> like me and Chris, uh, because right now, uh, a lot of the business owners, uh, you know, that are trying to divest are white guys like us. Um, and so it just takes a lot of courage to get into these, to get into this space. And I really appreciate you, uh, you are getting into this space with us. So uh, it's been a pleasure to serve you over the last few months. We'll see you in the second half of 2020. Uh, and, and uh, you know, remains to be seen, largely based on your feedback, what we do in the second half of 2020 to support you all in our list. But thank you all, and uh, we'll catch you uh, next time whenever that is.